I am a weather detective. The technical term for what I do is forensic meteorology. I reconstruct weather for past events. The variety of forensic meteorology cases is as vast as one can imagine, from plane crashes, skiing accidents, boating accidents, huge car pileups, and yes, to murder. One of the cases that stands out for me is not one of the bombing or murder cases that I worked on, but a tragic one that ended up changing laws. It was a hot August afternoon in Pompano Beach, Florida. Two teenage sisters, Amber and Crystal White, were vacationing with their family and very excited to go parasailing. As they were walking out to the boat, the skies were darkening and the winds were picking up. Little did the girls know that that morning, the National Weather Service forecasted for the possibility of thunderstorms, wind gusts up to 40 miles an hour, and the possibility of dime-sized hail in these strongest storms. This forecast was valid for South Florida, the area they were about to go parasailing. And then just 30 minutes prior to the girls' parasailing adventure, the National Weather Service issued a special weather statement describing a line of thunderstorms headed directly toward the area they were about to go parasailing. This was bringing gusty winds and high waves. Shortly after the girls' parasailing ride began, the winds picked up significantly. The girls became frightened. One of them yelled down to the captain to pull them back into the boat. But the ride continued. What the girls didn't know and I don't think a lot of people do know, is that once the winds get to a certain level, the hydraulic winch on the boat actually cannot pull you back down to the boat. The boat was pushed by the high winds and waves, so that it became parallel to the shore. The girls were dangling over the beach for over two minutes. This photograph was taken just seconds prior to the line snapping. There was nothing that onlookers could do but watch in horror. As the girls spun out of control, they were drug across the roof of a nearby building, drug through some trees, and left dangling from a tree over a courtyard, barely clinging to life, one with a broken neck. Amber White succumbed to her injuries and died. Prior to this accident, there were no regulations or laws in the state of Florida regarding parasailing. There still are none, no federal laws or regulations to this day. After this accident, the Florida Parasailing Act was passed. It's also known as the White Miskel Act in honor of Amber Wright White and another Florida tourist killed in a, floor, in a parasailing accident. This law is quite stringent, especially when it comes to weather. One of the many things in the law, if the wind's, current wind speeds are 20 miles an hour or greater, parasailing operations are prohibited in that area. Other weather items addressed in the law pertain to wind gusts, rain, fog, and lightning. Another part of the law is that every vessel, or in this case, boat, must be equipped with a working VHF marine radio. In addition, must have a separate electronic device capable of obtaining National Weather Service forecasts and current weather condition. This one portion of the bill alone would have alerted to the, the captain to the fact that the line of thunderstorms was headed directly towards them. Another case where weather played a role, or may have played a role, if the case had been investigated correctly, is the O.J. Simpson murder case. This case involved the brutal murders of Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman in Nicole's Southern California condo. There was a cardboard cup of melting ice cream left on the banister in Nicole's condo, indicating that perhaps the murders occurred later in the evening than alleged. The first officer on the scene admitted that he did not preserve it. A forensic meteorologist could have determined the atmospheric conditions in the condo, the temperature and the humidity, 
thus aiding in determining how long the ice cream had been left out of the freezer. This, in turn, would have aided an ice cream melting expert. And believe it or not, one was actually hired by the defense. It was Thursday, January 15, 2004, and this was to be the last night of Michelle Nice's life. Michelle Nice was originally from the Philippines. She was now living in a New, Jer New Jersey mansion with her husband and their three children. Her husband was a chief executive at a pharmaceutical company. She was living the American dream. It was a cold January night, with fresh snow on the ground from the storm that had passed through during the day. On this last night of Michelle's life, she closed up the makeup counter at the department store where she worked, and she headed out on a date with a man who was not her husband. The storm that passed through during the day brought strong, gusty winds, about three to four inches of new snow on the ground, and then bitterly cold temperatures overnight. This caused power outages, fender benders, and down power lines all over the region. The next morning, a local utility crew was out working on one of the down power lines, and one of them happened to notice that a, an SUV had gone off the roadway, down an embankment, and was sitting about 100 feet off of the road in the middle of a creek, with its engine still running as they could see exhaust fuming from the back of the car. Michelle Nice's lifeless body was found slumped behind the wheel of the car. There was blood on her forehead, and there was blood pooled around the seat behind her. Was this a tragic accident, and the car went off the road? Or was this a murder scene? If it were murder, who were the suspects? A spouse or a significant other is almost always the first suspect. However, in this case, investigators learned that the man that Michelle was going out on a date with that night was the family gardener. Also, they discovered that she had been having an affair with him. This greatly complicated things for them, as now they had a love triangle. Let's look at some of the clues investigators had to go on. First, Michelle was not wearing any shoes on this bitterly cold night. Second, there was blood found on the outside of the vehicle. How did it get there? But the clincher was there were boot footprints in the snow leading away from the passenger side of the vehicle, so there must have been someone else at the scene. Unfortunately, the road had been plowed overnight, so once the footprints reached the road, they completely disappeared. So what happened? After going out on the date with the family gardener, Michelle arrived home shortly after midnight, where she was confronted by her husband, Dr. Nice. Dr. Nice claimed that a fight broke out. Michelle lunged at him with a stiletto heel or a letter opener, neither of which was ever found by investigators. He slammed her head into the concrete garage floor, panicked, stuffed her body into the SUV, and then just drove less than a mile down the road from their house, where he found an opening in the guardrail, drove the car off down the embankment, left it in the middle of the creek with the engine running. This is a perfect example of how forensic meteorology enabled investigators to solve a crime. Of the many clues they had to go on, some were. The utility crew came out very early in the morning because of the storm the day before to work on the down power lines. They found the crime scene. Very quickly, this greatly aided investigators. The bitterly cold temperatures overnight preserved the crime scene, preserved the blood evidence on the outside of the vehicle, and it preserved Michelle Nice's body so that the medical examiner was able to determine the manner of death. Also, the creek was not running fast enough to wash the vehicle downstream. The potential killer perhaps thought it would have washed down the stream, erasing all of the evidence. It did not. But the clincher was the boot footprints in the snow. If the snow had been too deep, when one pulls their foot out of the snow, the snow sloughs in, destroying the footprints. 
If it had been windy overnight, it would have blown snow into the footprints, eradicating them. If there had been ice on the ground, no footprints would have been left. If the snow had been allowed to melt and or melt and refreeze, it would have destroyed them. But the snow was just the right depth and consistency to leave a few perfect footprints for investigators. They were able to not only identify the size of the boot, the type of boot, and they linked this directly back to Dr. Nice. Because of all of this weather-related evidence, Dr. Nice was found guilty and convicted of manslaughter. These are just a few examples of how forensic meteorologists help solve cases. We use all sorts of clues and scientific data to determine what happened weather-wise. When it comes to forensic meteorology and being a detective in the solving of crimes, weather is the smoking gun. Thank you.